Hey everybody, welcome back. I uh, had a quick second. I'm actually working on some client work right now, but while it is rendering, I wanted to talk about something that came up in the comment section of the last video. Uh, I'm really enjoying these last couple of videos where I just kind of sit here and talk about audio topics with all of you. And one of you left a comment in the comments section of the last video asking what is more important, the source or the loudspeaker? And I love this question because for two reasons, I think it's an important one and it's one that a lot of people ask themselves, uh, especially when they're building a system for the first time. But I also think that it, it, it's good because it allows us to talk about where things are going in the not too distant future. So to answer the question first and foremost, which do I consider to be more important or where would I place my focus, source or loudspeaker? Well, first and foremost, I would put it on the room. Nothing will have a more profound impact on the sound of your system at any price point that you choose to buy into the hi-fi hobby than the room. So I wanna throw that out there. I think that that's the most important, that you understand the strengths and weaknesses of your room before getting too far down the rabbit hole with gear. Um, and that may mean that the system that you may want to build and put in a certain room, the room itself may not be the best choice. And you may actually be better off going into a smaller room or a different room than what you may have originally intended. So maybe we'll do a whole video about the room uh, stuff later, but I do wanna stress that more than any single piece of gear, the room is going to have the greatest impact on what you experience. Now, to the question at hand. Uh, source or loudspeaker? Well, uh, I know that there can be an argument made for um, the source, meaning if your source component, be that a turntable, CD player, streaming device, what have you, if that can't extract the information from your media of choice, uh, record, CD, or streaming service, then no amount of buying electronics, high end or not, down the line is going to matter because they don't have any information with which to play with. So by that logic, the source is the most important aspect of the signal chain. But conversely, no single product will color and or affect what you hear from said source than a loudspeaker. So it's kind of a chicken and an egg sort of a thing. But I will say this, as we move more and more towards digital, right? that, that sounds antiquated. Now that we've arrived at a completely, almost completely digital ecosystem, I do think that the source becomes a little less important, especially when it comes to streaming, because uh, with, with digital information being what it is, just basic ones and zeros, Overspending on a source doesn't make a lot of sense because having a super, super high-end source, you know, costing thousands of dollars, uh, I know that there's a lot of hyperbole about what those things and those products can do, but at the same time, you can't make the zero rounder or the one straighter or sharper. It's, 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 if it's a bit perfect thing, if it's just, you know, taking a digital signal and moving it downstream, then especially in the terms of a transport, uh, then the source becomes very uh, not as essential. And it becomes more about how the digital is decoded and then uh, converted from digital into analog, in which case then the DAC becomes incredibly, incredibly important. And we can have a whole conversation about now what's better transport or DAC or, or all in one versus separates and that, and maybe we will, maybe we will, maybe you guys will all chime in down below and say, that's the conversation we should be having. But for now, I want to look at it from the standpoint of, you know, an all in one source. Let's say for example, an OPPO player, rest in peace, OPPO, but an OPPO player, not exactly cheap at roughly a thousand dollars or $1,500 when they were sold new but far, far, far from expensive. And an oboe player arguably was the ultimate source because it did everything. You know, it played music, played movies at a very high quality, and you could go 
the DACs internally to it were very nice and you could go analog out of an OPPO into an analog preamp and thus down the chain into an amplifier. And it was a fantastic, fantastic way of enjoying a variety of digital mediums. Um, but a lot of people bought OPPO players and connected them via a coaxial or optical cable to their AV receiver or AV preamp, thus turning their OPPO player into a transport. Now, if your digital device is merely a transport, then don't spend that much money at all because what you're doing is you're just reading the ones and zeros and shoving them down the line to your AV receiver or AV preamp, in which case you spent thousands of dollars on an OPPO player when a couple hundred dollar um, big box or mass market uh, Blu-ray player that also plays DVDs and CDs would have just done the same. Hell, there are people on forums right now and even on YouTube that will tell you that for music, one of the best transports on the planet is a PlayStation Generation 1 game console. Who knew? Who knew? I can't vouch for that one way or the other, but who knew? And I, what do those cost on eBay? 30 bucks? 40 bucks? Maybe? Or maybe they're ridiculously expensive now that audiophiles are, are going to be clamoring all over themselves to buy uh, Generation 1 PlayStations. I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so if you're, if you're looking at sources from the standpoint of, I want it to do everything. You know, I want it to play all the digital formats, be it music or movies, and I want the DAX internal, and I'm gonna go analog out of that device to my preamp and thus, or integrated amp, and not have any sort of extra digital stuff down the line, then I would say a source is, is pretty important. But, so many things about equipment is redundant nowadays and that there are DACs in your uh, source components, your digital source components. There are DACs inside your AV receivers. There are DACs inside your AV preamps. Uh, there are even DACs in some instances inside your television. Uh, so we're, we're kind of decoding, re-encoding, decoding, re-encoding, decoding, re-encoding, and it's just, it's, it's all kind of a mess. So remember that because we're going to get to that in just a second. So yeah, I would say if you're looking at a source as an all-in-one piece, meaning you really do want it to decode everything and do kind of everything really well, then I would say, yeah, go ahead and spend. That is arguably going to be as important or more important than any other device in your signal chain. But I would then say that if it, if your source can read it and pass it along down the line, then it becomes very important. But nothing is going to impact or color the sound or your experience more than a pair of loudspeakers. And as such, I would say that loudspeakers are slightly more important to get right and to get ones that are going to last and ones that are going to sound good to you. Uh, and as a result, um, that's kind of where I would go. If someone were like, oh, prioritize my budget, Andrew, I would say, uh, well, what room is it in? What, what are your tastes? What are your personal proclivities? Um, what kind of a listener are you? And then from there, loudspeaker to source on down the line. So, yeah. And the reason I say that about loudspeakers, and I think I've made this point pretty clearly, is because loudspeakers don't just suddenly suck. If you get a good pair and they're, and they're quality built and they sound good in 2019 and you take care of them, there's a very real chance they're going to sound great in 2030. And the people that like, oh, you know, you may look back in the late 90s buying like Wilson Watt Puppy 5s or 6s at $25,000 a pair. You may have been like back then going, oh, crazy. They're nuts. They're out of their mind. But in 2019, they're still, they still have those loudspeakers and they, they likely sound as good, if not better, uh, than they did when they bought them new. And they likely are as good or better than a lot of loudspeakers made today. So if you are the type of listener and you, this is something that you're passionate about and you're going to get a lot out of it, then I would argue that there is there is something to be said for doing a one and done purchase 
at the loudspeaker level because the chances of a loudspeaker becoming suddenly terrible or out of vogue is, is slim to none. But source components do change, do change. And so do DACs for that matter. I mean, I can recall at one point I had a musical fidelity Tri-Vista or New Vista DAC and it was expensive. It was super expensive. It was glorious. I loved it. Um, it was fantastic. But if I were to use that DAC today, I, I think that some people could argue, and I could probably even argue, that uh, uh, you know, um, a Cambridge Audio or a, a shit audio or even a damn Dragonfly DAC in some respects could outperform uh, that $3,000 DAC from just 10 years ago. And so that's why the digital stuff, like sources are important in the digital realm, but I, they're really hard for me to spend a lot of money on or even to argue in favor of you spending a lot of money on because the digital landscape changes so radically, so radically, but sources are important. Now, if you're an analog fan, if you're a turntable fan, which you know I am, and if you're a subscriber or a fan of this channel, you know we talk about turntables all the time, um, then yes, yes, the source becomes incredibly important. Uh, because if the record, if the grooves have it to give, then you do need a certain amount of equipment. You do need a certain level or quality of stylus and cartridge and preamp in order to extract all of that information from the grooves. And so in that respect, yes, you may end up having to spend. And if records are your, are your jam, then yes, by all means, you should invest. You should invest in really solid uh, analog playback or vinyl playback in that respect. And then also invest in loudspeakers. And then the rest of the stuff, you know, just get an amp that powers your loudspeakers properly and get a preamp that has enough inputs for you. But honestly, uh, if, if you're using electronics as tone controls uh, or to change the coloration of your system, I argue that you didn't buy products based on what your tastes were. You bought products based on what you thought you should get or what you assumed everyone uh, would tell you to buy. Uh, I do agree that sound, sound taste or taste and sound will change over time, sure, because your hearing changes, but if you're suddenly trying to figure out how to make your system warmer or less bright or less forward or more laid back, I argue you made the wrong purchase in speakers to begin with. And I would, I would ask of you to ask yourself why you did that. Because chances are... That's a bigger question that needs answering for you. And, and I think, and it's not, I'm not saying this in a, in a mean spirited way. I, I really do think that this happens to a lot of people. And so just be wary of that. Be very cognizant of that. Now, I said to remember uh, something about the digital components and how things change. And that mean, that brings us to the second part of this video. I know, finally, right? The second part of this video, which is, why I think the conversation about sources is important because the entire concept of what a system is going to be, what it's going to look like is rapidly, rapidly changing. And whether you have noticed this or not, you are bound to notice it uh, much more clearly in the not too distant future. And what I mean by that is the ultimate source is arguably in your pocket at all times and that is your phone because it grants you access to so many services and an, uh, an unlimited stream of music and now movies. So as a result, by that logic, I would say speakers become all the more important because the system of the future won't require a preamp. It won't, may not even require an amplifier. And if it does require an amplifier, amplifiers as we know them today are going to become drastically, drastically different. Um, because the need for cables, the need for connections, hard connections like that, it, 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 the, the time that those products have in the light is dwindling by the day. And so the system of a future is going to be a display, 
uh, some type of device that allows you access to the internet and loudspeakers because those loudspeakers are going to connect to said display or to an amplifier and that amplifier is going to be smart uh, that allows itself to be connected to said display or said device in your pocket uh, to create music. And then as for the rest of it, if let's say you're a fan of vinyl uh, records, it's going to come down to new vinyl preamps or record players themselves having the capability to connect wirelessly to this type of an ecosystem. And that's just the way of it. That's just the way it's going to go. And that's, that's not a bad thing. It's not, and I, 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 and I know I'm going to get some people on the comments that are going to be like, I, I, I pray or I, I weep for the day that this occurs. And, and it's already here, man. You know, it's already here. It's just going to become more common and it's going to get better. And that's okay because back when CDs came out or when Blu-rays were being talked about overtaking DVDs or coming out in, in place of DVDs, there were detractors to that as well. And it's just the nature of change in this industry. And we are in a technological industry and we will march forever forward. And no amount of sticking your head in the sand is gonna change that. So it's better to be informed, especially, especially if you're making some big time uh, financial decisions right now. It's better to be informed and put your money, in, if you're gonna put money in harm's way, to, to put it in harm's way as smartly and intelligently as possible. So that's what I mean when I say, you know, hey, you don't need to spend a fortune on speakers. Uh, you can buy, you know, but if $500 is a lot of money for you, and, and it's a lot of money for a lot of people. I'm not disparaging that. But if $500 is what you have to spend on, on, on speakers, get the right ones. Get ones that are going to last you. Um, don't sit here and buy something that's going to get you by and then know in a couple years' time, you know, I'm going to get something else, but I need something now. Like, save your money. Save your money and up your budget to $750 or $1,000. Don't get anything right this second. You know, buy smartly, but don't, I, I personally, I wouldn't invest anything right now of any consequence in super pricey electronics uh, because, you know, Bluetooth is getting better every day. Streaming is getting better every day. Televisions are coming with more and more tech built into it every day. And the need for separate players, the need for separate this, separate that is just dwindling absolutely dwindling and like i said the future is going to be a display something that gets you access to the internet either your phone or a computer or the or the, the web browser built into your television and then loudspeakers and then maybe maybe a smart amplifier or maybe you have powered speakers with bluetooth connectivity um, and that will be what it is and then in which case your turntable becomes the x factor it becomes the thing that we have to figure out how to bring into the modern age. But there are already turntables with, you know, being designed with that in mind. And that's what's so exciting about all of this stuff, you know, because the, the era, I mean, the hi-fi hobby, audiophile hobby in general has always been progressing, has always been marching forward. But boy, have we been taking some exponential leaps lately. And I, I'm, I'm here for it, man. You know, I am. I think it's really exciting stuff. And I think that it's possible to be excited by it and to be interested in it without losing our minds uh, over it. And so, yeah, that 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 was all spurred on by because one of you guys wrote uh, what's more important, speaker or source. And that's how my brain worked. <laughs> that's how that that is. I just unpacked that that question unpacked all of that. So. Yeah. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? What do you, um, do you think I'm crazy? Do you, are you team source? You team speaker? Or are you something completely separate? Like you're like, oh, it's the preamp and the amp, stupid. I, I want to know. I want to know. I love reading the comments. I love reading the discourse that you guys have uh, amongst one another. I do try and chime in. I do try and answer things whenever I can. But uh, I do enjoy it. So thank you guys so much. And if uh, you're new to this channel, and I have noticed that quite a few of you are, are new to this channel and welcome. 
Uh, and if you're new to this channel, please uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know how you found us, but uh, also just, just welcome and thank you for subscribing. And if you are new to this video and have not yet subscribed, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if it's not too much trouble, subscribe. But that's all I got. That's all I got. I got to get back to editing. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, you guys know the drill. Uh, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. And until next time, thank you guys so very, very much for watching. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.